Hi there, my name is Eliška Pirkova and I work as a Euro Policy Analyst at Access Now, global civil rights organization that defends and extends digital rights of users at risk across the world. Today I am here to talk to you about the European Union Digital Services Act legislative package that the European Commission plans to publish on the 15th of December 2020. So why is this legislative piece so important that it deserves its own presentation? Well, the reason is quite simple and rather grim. Throughout the years, a handful of tech companies are serving as global gatekeepers for our enjoyment of fundamental rights, such as right to privacy or freedom of expression. We are seeing disinformation, hate speech and abuse of our personal data hurting targeted communities and negatively impacting democratic public discourse. To make matter worse, in many cases at the national level, Lawmakers are pushing for short-sighted solutions such as forcing private companies to police speech or demanding swift removal of user-generated content that further harms human rights protection. The European Union has the opportunity to address these problems using an approach that will establish clear responsibilities for private actors and hold them to account. While ensuring our rights are being protected, Systemic regulation is justified and necessary in this case. There is an enormous power imbalance between the large platforms and the people who are using them. Their business models are built on data harvesting without proper safeguards and do not give people adequate control either over their data or over the information they receive and impart. So how can BSA fulfill its promise of systemic regulation that empowers users and returns control back to you. First, adequate response mechanism for addressing illegal user-generated content that protects users' rights first needs to be based on building safeguards for procedural fairness, effective remedy and meaningful transparency. The DSA package can finally stop a negative trend of shifting state's obligation to private actors who often exercise those with no public scrutiny or proper transparency requirements while replacing judges in the online ecosystem. So-called notice and action procedure should be tailored to the specific categories of potentially illegal content and should empower users to report such content. The current intermediary reliability regime under e-commerce directive, that is, rules that determine when platforms can be held liable for hosting illegal content on its platform, together with the prohibition of general monitoring, have to be upheld by the upcoming legislation. States should refrain from establishing laws that would require proactive monitoring or filtering of content, because it would be bought in consistence with the right to privacy, and probably amount to pre-publication censorship. Finally, as a global organization, we know painfully well that when the wake terminology enters legislative frameworks, it always results into human rights abuse. Terms like harmful but legal content or online harms that are extremely difficult to define should be left outside the scope of DSA. Furthermore, the concept of legal but harmful can hardly be reconciled with the principle of legality, which is an ultimate precondition to the rule of law. This is not to say, however, that DSA won't have a means or measures how to tackle such a type of content. This is to say that transparency in this debate is essential. As far as transparency is just the generosity and not a requirement, we can hardly achieve platforms' accountability. Online targeting or online advertisement lies at the core of data harvesting business models of platforms and it shapes users' online experience. It allows large platforms to determine and speculate on people's personal preferences and behaviors. Because they harvest an unprecedented amount of personal data, they are able to boost engagement and derive profit by prioritizing and quantifying the popularity of certain type of content, which is often sensational and includes hate speech or disinformation. In the hands of major platforms, content moderation and content curation became commodity as our attention and time that we spend on these platforms. In order to tackle these issues, 
we propose transparency umbrella requirements that should be implemented and established by the DSA legislative framework. This is not to say that transparency is an ultimate silver bullet solution to this issue, but it's an essential precondition to find one. This umbrella framework consists of first, user-centric transparency that will return control back to you and empowers you in a way to understand how your data are being used and for what purpose. Second, the set of data have to be available to public authorities in order to finally exercise sufficient public scrutiny and oversight over these platforms and their operation. This goes hand in hand with our third requirement, which is the establishment of data access framework for researchers and journalists. So we can finally achieve research-based and evidence-based policy making based on the research that these actors will deliver. And finally, we are also proposed the set of safeguards for open content recommendation systems often responsible for algorithmic personalization and curation of content, and also broader requirements for algorithmic decision making that is happening in the background, usually without any awareness of users. Finally, it doesn't matter how great the law will be on the paper if it doesn't have a proper enforcement mechanism behind it. Based on our long-term experience in data protection field and our extensive work on GDPR, we developed DSA enforcement mechanism that we believe will deliver to its mark. Such an enforcement mechanism should consist of a network of independent national regulators from responsible sectors that will exercise DSA decentralized oversight at the national level. However, that is, if these national regulators are well equipped financially and with the resources to actually fulfill their new task. Such a network of independent regulators will require a strong coordination body at the European level, very similar to European Data Protection Board, but with more power and joint decision-making processes. And finally, for a good oversight, a new EU regulator that will be responsible for procedural safeguards established by the estate is absolutely necessary. And by these procedural requirements, we specifically refer to meaningful transparency that we hope will finally materialize once DSA is in power. The DSA package can be an example of good lawmaking that, we will, that will fill the existing regulatory gaps while placing user fundamental rights to its core. The framework, which has also been dubbed second GDPR, can establish European rules for addressing problems such as online hate speech and disinformation, fairness in the e-commerce and more meaningful transparency in algorithmic decision making or online targeting. This could not only transform the regulation of gatekeepers in Europe, but it could also serve as a global translator for content governance in the same way as its older sibling GDPR once did for data protection. Thank you very much for your attention. Stay tuned. If you're interested in the work that Access Now does in Europe or elsewhere, Check our official website, accessnow.org, or get in touch with us via Twitter. I'll see you there.